tree called pine once. Okay, it's still finishing rendering all that, so that's, that's how bad it becomes. Right. So here uh, they were using ng and all that. Now you turned it to bo bind, bind once bind, and all those kind of stuff. You've changed that. Now. now if you if you load the same eight thousand rows. For one, you see it's already fast, right? And it has only created five watches. It's still as responsive, actually. Okay, so how does it work? I mean, it's very I'm simple. Still confused. Uh, there's only one editable box in the whole page. Yes. Why does it need to have six thousand watches? So, because you you create this uh, uh, what do you say array of models, right? Here. These are objects, and every time you do an ng bind on these things, or every time you do an interpolation with this double curly braces, it actually creates a watcher for you. But when all those items are not in a linked to any textbook, why do you need to do anything? No, just to just to display, right? You just you still have to show it here, right? Like watcher watches the model to update the view. Yes. So, so this is how Angular works. I mean, like this is usually how you write code in Angular. So where you do an ng bind or you do this interpolation to get you there, and that's what happens. It creates a whole lot of watches. And the way you uh, you know get around this problem is use something called as bind once. It's an open source directive or library which does that. Now the problem with bind once is that it cheats actually. Right? It's not bound anymore. So and if these change, then this this won't change. It's just it just binds it once. And then it doesn't create any watches, right? So, and the reason why you need bind once over other things is because in Angular sometimes you need you may not have data available when you when you get that thing in. So these directives may be empty, and so only when data comes in you need to be able to flush it in. Actually, so you don't need something like binding there, but you're not going to change it every time, and so it uses bind once. But if you do have to change it, then you would have to pay the Cost of all these watches. Okay, coming back. So now we have kind of seen what what happens if we take two-way data binding to the extreme. Of course, this is like a kind of a uh, very contrived example of what happens if you have too many watches and too many uh, you know bindings on a page. But I mean, it, it, it's it's easy to get there, and it kind of demonstrates why this is bad, right? And so, of course, like I said, right? I mean, mutable state is the root of all evil. Right, so how do you get rid of mutability, right? And then how do you how do you make sure that sum is mutable, sum is non-mutable? So React says that okay, you could have properties which you can pass in, and then you can have state. So there are two different things. State is something that is required by the current object to re-render itself, while property is immutable and is simply passed around just for binding another thing. So if properties change, they don't. Uh, uh, if if you change just the properties alone, the, the thing will not get. Re-render actually, but if you change state, it'll re-render. So in a React component, uh, if you want to, if you want it and its child components to re-render, you do something like set state, right? Once you say this dot set state and provide it a new model, it'll go ahead and re-render itself and all the child components beneath it, right? And then you would be saying like, right? Are you crazy? I mean, that's just a very costly operation to do. Anybody who has done backbone. Knows that that's that's like the absolute idiotic thing to do because you have your scroll positions. People may be typing in the uh, form at that point in time, and somewhere on top something changes. Right? If you go and re-render the whole thing, won't the form display go away? I mean, like won't the contents what he typed in go away? Or if he he scrolled into a particular point, and if you remove all the down notes and put in the, the down notes, doesn't your scroll position get affected? Right? All those kind of things. Right? Are you? But React is pretty smart about it. In fact, this is the reason why React is awesome. Is because um, they wanted to uh, make uh, what do you say these JavaScript applications fast. And uh, even yesterday, was somebody was asking, "Hey, you're doing all these things in Angular where you're adding these listeners in between, and doesn't that make it slow, right?" And Shyam was saying, uh, "It's almost always that the the." the The, what's the JavaScript is never the bottleneck. It's always the DOM which is the bottleneck, right? As it turns out, JavaScript is fast and it's fast enough that you can actually maintain the entire DOM structure in memory, actually. And then when a state change happens, you construct another DOM structure, and then you do a diff, actually, and then figure out the parts only the parts which change, and play those into the into the browser. 
actually. So that way, your uh, scroll positions don't go away. If you have form variables that don't get affected, that they don't go away, and all those DOM nodes are neat. So which is actually pretty neat, right? And this is how a DOM diff happens, right? Now you have so you have two items, say first and second, assuming, and then you have like the first one where first render is like okay div span first and this thing, and then you have like the second render which goes and says uh, div span uh, first and second. You add the second thing. Then the DOM operations that will get played is the it, it replaces the attribute of the first content to second and it inserts a new load as first. Uh, and this is how the diff logic works. Right? But you can see that this is already wasteful. I mean, all we need is to insert one DOM element. Why is it playing twice? Of course, you can insert a key operation to make sure that, that doesn't happen. But the point is, it, that's how it does. So it starts walking a tree. And then it starts finding out, hey, the, in the second one, the first guy says this thing has changed, so I'm going to change only the inner text of this guy. And I have to add one more node called span. So the algorithm is generic enough to know that, okay, it creates two trees, and then it says, okay, it starts comparing the first node and the second node. So, okay, something has changed, do that, and then add one more node, and then you're done. Like those kind of things. But you can make it work a little smarter by having key attributes to make sure that, hey, that is the same DOM element, don't change it. And so it will also compare for keys and all that. So but this is this kind of illustrates how how the how the thing works, right? So and uh, the most contentious point of using React um, is something called as JSX actually. So JSX is kind of an XML okay, now people are getting very so it's like almost kind of uh, XML syntax for describing DOM elements, right? So you already have HTML, which is sort of XML and then it it, uh, it shows uh, the markup and all that. Now what React gives is that it's a, it gives you the ability to stick in your HTML into JavaScript. Let me I, I let that settle there. Um, no. So if, if you're going to beat me up now, you can just hold on. Give me like three more slides. <laughs> right, I'll, tell, I'll explain why it's a good idea. Right. Now what happens is that this is purely a, 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 a compiler thing, right? So this is not like a new JavaScript templating language, right? This is this is just a, a, a variant of, Java, of JavaScript. It's just an extension on top of JavaScript. But once you run it through the JSX compiler, it turns it into this, actually. So what it does is that, so earlier you had like div, span, ul, blah, 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 and then ul and div. So it actually turns it down into inline functions like this. It turns it into react.dom.div, react.dom.span, and so on. So these are like normal components that you and I would write, actually. And it turns it into that. And the first attribute is, uh, first uh, parameter is the attributes that it takes, and the second parameter is the content it. And this is how it, it works. That's not a string. I'm sorry? This is not a string. So you're returning uh, an object though. No, it's not a string. It is not a string. Okay. So you're just writing it as, this is an expression, uh, and then and then you're just turning it out into actual thing. So it goes line by line instead of compiling the whole thing and pushing out one object. No, no, it doesn't do line by line. It still is a smart compiler in a sense that it knows that there is something open and so it needs to add it and so on and so forth. Like react.dom.ul.li, so why not just create one object and push it in react.dom? I mean, I didn't get quite get that. I mean, it's, it's basically pushing one object in the react dom. React. No, no, it, it, no, this is like react.dom.div is a component which has these attributes and which has these children. So the children are react.dom.span and all that. So, I mean, so it has a couple of interesting ramifications here, right? So what we are returning is a function call, which is basically a DOM component function call outside here. Uh, and so that means that we can, JavaScript functions can only return one value at a time. So in JSS expressions, you can, uh, every single component is basically, a, so this is a component, hello message is a component. Right? So you, you create that and this, it, all components need to have one kind of root node and everything is like embedded. You can't have multiple multiple nodes being written because of the JavaScript language. So what this has is there are no templates. This is a template. This, no, so okay, there's a difference between uh, okay, 
imagine how a handlebar template is, right? So when you have a handlebar template, it actually goes through the compiler and it returns a JavaScript function. Okay, and the JavaScript function does string interpolation in between, and then it renders out a string, which then gets stuck into your DOM. Right? That's how it works. Now, what this returns is uh, an, a virtual DOM representation of how your display should look like. It is not a template, although it is similar to that of a template, it is not a template. The, the way in which templates work right now and the way in which the JSX expressions work are very different. In fact, you don't even need to use JSX. You can actually write this if you if you wish. But it, it becomes cumbersome after a point, right? Because you need to have you need to like track all the nested things, and I mean it's essentially a, 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 a markup kind of structure. So I I for one like uh, like this. I mean it's similar to Flex, right? I mean Flex had this XML and action script, and you can you can actually put in XML inside uh, action script files. Uh, kind of syntax, and it's very similar to that in, in that regard. Yeah, <laughs> I'm being a little apologetic right now because, but it, it's, once you start coding, you will find out it's not as bad as it seems, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, but most people go this, like, oh, right? I mean, we came away from PHP and like we were doing connection strings there, and, <laughs> and finally learned our mistakes the hard way, and then we came to jQuery. And jQuery was like, you know, sticking DOM as string and all that. We came out and we used underscore template. And then we had handlebars and then Angular JS HTML. And now you're asking us to go back to this, right? <laughs> right. But it's not that bad. Let's, uh, so as any ideas go, there's this excellent blog post called Give It Five Minutes. And you should read that. I'll link up to it. But this is from the React documentary. I promise that this is the only wall of text slide in my, in my entire presentation. So it, it basically means that, so the React philosophy is that they think of display as components and not as uh, log controller and templates, right? So Angular thinks of it as controller and templates, Ember thinks of it as controller and templates and so on and so forth. Right? But uh, React's uh, philosophy is that these are components and these components have behavior and these components react to events and they give rise to a state. So uh, the the view is essentially a functional uh, transformation of a model. And this component is a way to get that, actually. And, and that is the reason why they have made this kind of choice in, uh, you know, uh, in avoiding templating languages and directly using JavaScript to do that. And any expression that you use in between here is like a proper JavaScript ex expression. You can put in any, like within that you can just put curly brace and put any JavaScript expression and it's, it's valid. And you can be say it's safe that you don't have to like worry about evaling and all that because it's actually done at compile time and not at runtime. Okay. Now, okay, let's start building, you know, a React app. But I have to warn you, right? I have mad CSS skills and as in zero, right? So I mean, the applications are going to look very bad. Uh, but at least we, I, I hope I'll be able to demonstrate a part. Yeah, but this is like an awesome thing. So I, I found I first found it on Scott Hazelman's talk on the future of VMs, and um, I think it's called the state of VMs. So kind of anyway, so let's go back. So let me go to my. So I have you can go to this Bitly link actually, uh, JS foo React. So this is basically a JS bin. Uh, uh, link. So the internet seems to be good today. So um, my original idea was to do um, a complete kind of offline kind of thing. But I think uh, so. Okay, if the URL comes like this, just put an edit on it. Uh, I got I messed up the copying the picture. So if you get if you, if you in fact you can actually write this URL down. It's easier. Let me know if you're all on this. So in the meanwhile, if you have any questions, if you want to like me, I mean, feel free to, you know, shout out and then we can, we can have it. Yeah. Yes. So that if function that we showed that wouldn't that be very slow? 
uh, as it turns out, it's not actually. Uh, we can experiment with it here. I mean, we'll put in like twenty thousand two items and check how fast or how slow it is. We'll enable the FPS meter and check that. We'll do a set it well, try to find out, make the worst case for it possible, and just turn you know five percent of it, and then like your case. Yes, there, there is a cost associated with that. So there is a cost associated with if you have a large. I mean, it's kind of a needle in a haystack problem, right? So if you have a large set of things and then you like only five percent of these things, right? Then, then in such a case, yes, you are doing a lot of uh, down tree generation and diffing and doing that for for very little thing. Um, the solution to that uh, is not to ditch React, but use React with immutable data structures. That would be cool. But we'll we'll talk about it as we keep on. So, is everybody on this, or does anybody need anything? Everybody. Okay, cool. So, I like JSP because it brings back the Apple sheet. So, just cool. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to turn on the React actually. So, once you have React, it's going to. So, is it is it visible to everybody, or should I increase the consoles? Is it? Is it better? Okay. So, so once you choose JSX React on this, it will uh, it will create uh, it will add the uh, React add-ons automatically here, right? So you need a mount point for the React component, right? So I'm assuming document or body is the mount point. So what I'm going to do is I'm say React dot render component and then say H1. Um, and okay, so now if you run this, it's going to, it's not going to work because you have to tell JSX that this JavaScript file is actually a, a JSX file. To do that, what you do is you do this uh, within a comment. You say JSX React dot com, and then hello world of course, right? Now this is what happened here. So you are you are asking it to so let me uh, get rid of the HTML we look we didn't change anything there. So this is what happened. So we have uh, we we had this H1 component and H1 is actually React dot DOM dot H1 actually. So this would work. So even if I don't have this and if I want to just use this thing, let me say React dot H1. It's exactly that, actually. So it's still just JavaScript code, right? It's just that this is a nicer way of putting it. So the it's just a nicer way of showing the same thing, but both are virtually the same. Oh, sorry, I would I want to turn it. JSX So, if you are here, I mean, you have done like 20, 30 percent of React already. Okay. So, here you are mounting a React component. So, H1 is a normal component, like anything else. And you are mounting it on a download, actually. And which happens to be document.poly. But it could be any download. You can create a div ID app and say document.get element ID of the app and stick it in there. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
getting this to work?
Where is this called add-ons? Okay, uh, we'll come to add-ons a little later. So React has this uh, slightly, I mean, like for example, this two-way linking functionality, some class management functions and all that. So they are they are classified under add-ons. So they ship a few mixins and features. So we can also use a core React library, and that should also work. So. So you can actually click on this arrow, uh, and this will take it to a new. And here you can basically look at elements and new source now. Okay. So are we good? Is there a significant performance difference between the two? Uh, no, this. Uh, so when you are running it in runtime like this, yes, probably because you are also compiling and running it. But uh, usually in your prod, you will pre-compile it and then in, you won't see a big difference. I mean, in fact, there won't be any difference. Okay, so let's start building the canonical uh, to-do example. Okay. So the way you uh, work with or you build React applications is that uh, you start building a simple HTML uh, thing of your app and then slowly start extracting it into components. Okay. So let me add Bootstrap just because everybody uses Bootstrap. It gets the reset and all that. So I'm going to get rid of jQuery. I don't want jQuery here. I'm also going to get rid of uh, the Bootstrap JavaScript. I just want to use it for that. So the way you want to do it is you can give class as a divide equals app. So that the app is going to be um and then you say so you're gonna have UL with class actually. Then I'm gonna have li span, and then I'm gonna have a span indicator to say whether it's completed or not. Um, so I'm gonna add the font possibility. Does anybody know what is a font person? Sure. Okay. So, and this is complete, and let's see. Um, so, this is a library called Font awesome, actually. So, Font awesome has these nice icons that you could use, and you can just put uh, FA hyphen whatever thing that you want, and automatically these icons come there. Do you have any input for the Yeah, yeah. So I added the font awesome from the So let this add, and this is kind of the output that we want. So we'll, we'll try to get here first. Okay. 
Excellent. So, how does this work? Now you have your get that in the JSX code. Let me get rid of output for a moment. So here we have, uh, so we have the main app, and then you have the tasks component, and you have the task component within that. Actually, so let's build the task component because that's the simplest actually, right? Uh, so assuming we have a few tasks, so task is just going to be an array, and task is going to be say task push. Say. Um, set this to true and I'll create one for task. Task component. Uh, the way you create a component in React is that I call it the task view, React for the component. And every component has a render method actually. Right? And this render method would basically give out some HTML. Yeah. So basically a DOM expression. It has to give out a DOM expression. And in our case, the DOM expression is MI and we're going to display the task content. So we'll assume that somebody is going to give us the task as a property, actually. So what we do is dot props dot task dot title. Okay. And we'll just get this working. We'll come to the status a little bit shorter. And then we also have tasks view. So which is going to be the main thing. Or we call it the task list view. Um, so, before we go further, let's first find out how this looks actually. So, we can, so I'm going to create a small placeholder here. ID equals. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Good catch, thanks. Uh, and then I say React dot render component and create a task view. Okay. And I need to set a property for it, right? So I'll say task equals tasks of C. And since this is a JavaScript expression, I'll have to put this within curly braces. And close this. And I'll say this. I would render it into test. So let's look at the output. Um, okay. Again, here I missed setting this. And so it creates task one. I don't know if you want to change this. Yes. So this works. Now that this works, so we start rendering all the tasks in this. So to do that, so we have to save our task list view, and that will be a React dot create class. And I will have a render function. Now here I need to create a whole bunch of these li objects, right? And this is just a UL object. So uh, I have to return a UL. But then um, I'll have to have a whole bunch of task view objects here, actually. So the way you do that uh, in React is that uh, since they are just JavaScript expressions, you can say tasks dot 
So here I, I'm on, I will uh, get tasks as the initial state. So I'll say get initial state of how this uh, thing comes in. So this is just a uh, React component lifecycle function, uh, which basically when, when before the component is rendered, uh, this function will be called and it expects you to return uh, a set, I mean, in the initial state of the component. So I'm just referring the variable that we created on top here. I'm just returning that. So in this function, I I would be able to access it as this dot state dot tasks actually. So this is an array for us. Um, so as since I'm on Chrome, I can do map. Otherwise, I'll have to use underscore or something like that because Chrome has uh, has this ES5 array functions that I'm using. So I get the task object here, and here I can say return task view task equals D. Okay. Now I can capture this in a variable. So these are a bunch of task views, and I can then stick it into the URL. Okay. So, I give you some task time. view will be output string. I'm sorry, so task view, again, none of this is an output string, right? So, like, how this return works, it's just a DOM node expression, right? So, task view, will be a DOM node expression, which will then, when it runs, it will expand it to a line. It won't be a string. None of it actually returns a string. Make sense? I'm sorry? No, it's just a map function, right? So uh, here, so this is an array, right? So it's, I mean, this is like any other um, map, array dot map. So array dot map basically returns this DOM element. So task views is a array of these task view DOM, React DOM elements. But the compiler is smart enough to figure out that between viewers and closing viewers, there is an array. So all of those are giant views. Exactly. In fact, the compiler doesn't do anything here. It just is, uh, I mean, it just translates it to task views, comma task views, that's all. The compiler doesn't do anything. So if you want to see um, how this is in a compiler, so let's do this. So, That is a right JS executor. So let's do this here. So, so we have our task list view, right? So let's see what what happens if we stick this in here. J6 and dot. So the compiled JSX just sticks in task series here. You see this? It doesn't expand. It's just an expression for it, right? And and so that this works. So in the earlier example. Yes. The parent node had multiple nodes. Yes. And you were just giving it multiple arguments. Uh -huh. you are the second no, no. Uh, so it was always one argument. It was always one argument. I mean, so you you'd have uh, the attributes on the content. The content just happens to be 
an array of things here. That's all. Yeah. So now I'll just render this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the stuff in div id app because we have this now. And I'm going to say react dot render component explicit here. Now if you look at the output, you should have first taken as the input. I'll just, if it works, so I'll just uh, leave it here. And, so let me know if you've gotten this part. So here I deleted everything that is in, uh, that is within app actually, and this looks a bit like this. Let me just get this. So you can always visit that URL again and you can get to the latest page if you are getting stuck. Is anybody else having troubles? <laughs> Thank you. 
So here, um, so you mean here, right? So here, uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating task view. Task is this task object, right? So this dot props dot task actually refers to that task object. Task yeah, array. No, not array. This is the object in the array. Thank 
Okay. So does anybody else uh, need some assistance? Hmm? Oh, please. Thank you. 
So, anybody, everybody else is okay. If not, uh, I would suggest you go to this URL again and just continue from there. Okay. Okay. So now um, we'll get the state for it, right? So just like anything else, we want to say if it is completed, then we want to show uh, a completed status, right? Now. Uh, you would want to put a fa hyphen span fa hyphen this thing. So essentially, so what span directly dial itself it's not working. Is it the problem with? Uh, no, this will work actually. But you have to say class name. Um, we give class. Yes. So this would this would work. Um, it will come for all the three. Of course, we want it only for. The one, um, so you get to that actually, short, right? So, so if you put F, so that if you notice here, I'm using class name and not class. Um, the reason is uh, so, it, it, so you, you can understand that it's it's getting combined over to JavaScript and few things like class and uh, things like uh, you know uh, for and all that are keywords, and so they will cause problems. So some of these attributes uh, you'll have. Are changed. I think, to my knowledge, only these two. Uh, so you just have to say class name, and for for you have to use HTML for. It's kind of documented. It's one of the gotchas. We'll get get that. Uh, Li. Yeah. yeah, so the the thing is that then you need to wrap it in a parent component and set it. So I got a scenario like I need to pass both together without a parent. So you, no, so so okay, you have to understand what you're doing. We are, we are returning something, right? You can never return two things from a function. You can always return one thing from a function. Yeah. But unless we are adding one more, yes. That that is there. That is there. <laughs> But if you use Bootstrap, I think it's okay because Bootstrap anyway you add so many things. <laughs> One other thing is not going to matter. No, but you are right. I mean, right now it is the limitation that you have to have. Um, you have to ha have everything in like one thing and then return that. You, know, you can't return multiple things. Also. 
or you said two classes, so one keyword, other one is for. Uh, to my knowledge, I, I only know of these two. What is the for? Oh. For is a, a JavaScript keyword, right? So it won't be possible so to. Why do you want to use for in a template? In a so you would say you would say label for this ID, and so for uh, accessibility features, you need that those things. Okay. React. Yes, it's part of React. So whatever you pass in as so here. We are saying uh, uh, task view task is equal to something, right? So whatever you say equal to this equal to something, they get passed in as props to this object. Can we pass that properties in uh, That does not work to my knowledge, actually. But we can try. Here it works. Here it works. Um, that's because it's getting as a part of the content here, but I've, I haven't tried um, sending those to a scenario. Because it expects that uh, the component surrender method should return a DOM expression out and not here. You can try it. Can we try NBSP? <laughs> a good question. NBSP currently is not working. There's an open bug for it. Uh, and uh, but it's a very good observation. There, there are a few HTML entities which cause problems actually. Yeah, and NBSP. So and NBSP, if you try it now, it will look a weird escape kind of thing. Yes, yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, so. Now we need we need to uh, either have this check or not have this check, right? And that's pretty much what we're talking about. That's the only difference here, right? So here we can turn it into a expression. So Now, um, yeah, so it, it does. I mean, my problem is. So here, I mean, I'm just doing a string concatenation here. I, you know, you need FA, and then I have an expression which basically says if it's completed, then you add FA check, otherwise just an empty string. And I set that to the class name. So here you can pass later the HTML so the HTML snippet instead of the class name. I don't want the span tag in this case. Okay. So, so what? How? How would you want it? See, the span itself. Yes. So, uh, for example, like the span class could be a fail. That is a better one when the complaint is good. Okay. Good point. So if you don't want that, so here you can come here and you can say
I'll just get rid of the output for a moment. And if you want to take this out into a variable, you can say Um, so, if you look at, okay, let me show you this. So, if I have, uh, you know, like, like, we've already got contributed mask out here. So, like, yeah, I, I, I'll show you one second. So, if I say, So the compiled JS basically looks like this. For is a HTML, for is a JavaScript keyword. Yeah, yeah, and the compiler should change it to something else, right? Or write it like that, or something. Yeah, so the reason is JSX is meant to be a spec, actually. Um, so they want to keep that spec. So you also have data hyphen attributes and all those kind of things. So they can't possibly think of every single this thing. So they have implemented it in the library, the React library, and J JSX is just a uh, spec for translating <coughs> XML to, to your things. So they want to keep JSX as light as possible. They don't want to have like DOM kind of logic into JSX. So we've gotten to a point where um, where we have got this checkbox, I mean the indication of the status. Then we now have to tie up tie it up with actions. Actually, um, so do you guys want to take a break now, or what? Uh, so, how do you want to do it? So we last team. Four fifteen is the break. Okay, we have fifteen now. minutes. Oh, yeah. four fifteen. Okay. I think I stopped following me. I even then got a Okay. Thank you. So, are you guys comfortable with this? Uh, come here. Yes. Anybody needs any assistance? Yes. We have until six. Yeah. Yes, you would put it in a separate file. In fact, the project structure generally looks like views. Within the views directory, you would put that. The stuff that we put on top that will usually be in models. Uh, so you would split your JavaScript code on. I mean, you would split your JavaScript code. Just like any other framework, like you would do the same thing in Angular or whatever. I'm I'm just using JSBin because I didn't want to go through the setup pain that others have. So. Yeah. So that's because uh, I'm just using it as a variable inside here, right? So it's just a DOM node for me. So if I have to, so I can as well write this expression in yeah, here. Yeah, it, it looks ugly, right? I mean, so it says, okay, you have this title and then you have something else. So I first wrote it within this and then I refactored it out there. Does it answer you? Ah, okay. So all of these is like uh, it's all all this stuff, right? So I mean, this is just uh, JS been thinking that we do. some of them are valid, of course. Um, so line twelve status, it doesn't need a semicolon. Oh wow! I'm writing pretty good JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sorry? Yes. Okay, so we talked about props and state, right? So props are supposed to be immutable. You're never ever supposed to change props, right? But you can change state. Okay, and when you change state, we'll come to that. We'll come to actions shortly. So when you change state, then you can trigger a re-render of the component, essentially. So. So does anybody else need any? Oh. Okay, so so first thing we have to understand is that this is just a JSX compiler, right? So uh, so JSX compiler basically takes the expression as is and then sticks it into the long. Like for example. If I put an expression here, right? React. Uh, sorry. Uh, so I say, and and here I say task view task is this, right? So essentially, when JSX goes through, all it does is it does this. It doesn't do any transformation there, except for the fact that it changes that angle brackets into thing and then puts this as a variable, and that's about it. Right? Everything else is then done by React itself. JSX doesn't do any part of it, actually. So React knows that it needs to create this task view uh, with the props set to task T. And then the rest is kind of the same. Right? So this basically gives a declaration saying that, okay, this is the class that you need to use. And this is the, uh, these are the properties that you need to pass in. So it will probably create an object or task view. So we have all uh, DOM levels that we created, changes on objects. Yes. Then puts in the variables and then draws it. Yeah, draws it, gets a representation of the DOM, then does it change. Yeah, we are comfortable. I'll be here anyway like, some more times. So if you guys want to like go grab D and come back. So we'll uh, come back at 420. Is that fine? Right? Yeah. So, should we get started? Yeah? It will psych after a team. <laughs> okay, so, so we haven't gone down the data bounding route yet, right? So, so everybody has this canonical example, like Angular has one, Ember has one. And say, okay, how do you do data binding? And you put something in a text box, and that comes out in a label with. So we'll do that to understand how events work. So I'm going to have uh, so like above these tasks, I just want to put a, another input element, and I want to when you hit enter, I want to add that to the task list. Let's see how it works. So. <clears throat> So I have something called a new task view. <coughs> so I'll have two things here. One I will have an input. Like it's next. And I also have a span for the output. <laughs> Okay. 
So this is creating something. So that's problem for us. It's a get initial state. So overriding the get initial state is compulsory problem. So if you whenever you want to use state, you need to do that. So here I'm using state. When we output this. So in, now that lets me do whatever I want. But now I want to also like for the just for the sake of fun, I want to show the value right below whatever I type. So so all the uh, DOM events are also available in uh, as a part of React. So you can do on change, and I'll say on change event handlers this dot handle change. Um, I'll have a handle change function here. And then I'll say this dot state output is dot get dot so what I did is now um, I have the um, so, so whatever I type basically comes here. So okay, so let's see what what we what happened here. So now I have an on change function on the on the input type text actually, and when I change this, then I just get the value. Okay. So the thing that we have to observe here is that these are synthetic DOM. So if you look at the console, um, so as I type in, uh, let me also console.log in here. Clear this. So what you get back is a synthetic event here. Actually, synthetic event is basically, the, the, the nice part about it is, uh, React works on all browsers from IE 8 and above. Actually, so even if you have like HTML5 drag and drop events, um, React makes it available in IE8 because these are synthetic events. They just work. Maybe you have to fudd, fuddle around a little bit because it's IE8, but essentially they're there. So, what is a synthetic event? So, synthetic event is basically a wrapping over the native event. So, the native event will be a mouse thing, but you may get a drag and drop event, which is there. Like, for example, on change uh, does not get triggered on certain browsers unless it's blurred, you know, because you have to do a key down otherwise, or a key up to do it. But React kind of uh, homogenizes all this as on change is like as you type, period. Right? So, you don't have to do on blur on one thing and on key down on something else and all this kind of things. Yes. No, it's it's pretty. I mean, like directly on the metal, so on the down here. Getting closer. Yeah. yeah. And also make this small. Any challenge? This is for my. I mean, I mean nothing more than what you would have usually have to do. I mean, like your CSS stuff is there and all that. But apart from that, all the DOM stuff is homogenized, so you don't have to do much. Yeah, we'll come to key. No, shortly. Are these events always bound to the specific element or are they delegated to some other element? They are bound to this element. So, so okay, uh, I understand, I get your question now. So for example, if I want to put a, uh, put an event on new task view and not on the input element inside the new task view, that won't work. So you will have to take that as a property and then pass that property on to your uh, thing. So you can either use transfer props too that or you can do, you can actually manually assign it. We'll, uh, we'll have a look at that.
let me know if you've got there because this is kind of like one other milestone once you get through this others will be kind of relatively simple So what set state does is that it, here I'm changing the so the state is the output here. Right? So this is what determines what the out, output looks like. So whenever something changes, so if you have to re-render this thing, so every time you call a set state, it actually re-renders the whole thing again. Is this fine? So what we added in task list view was we added this div and we just because earlier it was just ul so I added this div and then I put this new task view. Um, so it's basically this dot. So as long as you can access this, this dot and set state on it, it's going to re-render this and all its children. Yes. Okay, and so at that point, you render the last. Yes, it'll re-render now. So you will, it'll, it'll always have to render the first time. So your initial state needs to take care that even if it's empty, it does render it properly or you need to put in some values which yeah yeah something like that which gives some sort of a DOM or you can even if it's not there then you put it in an if and not to render it also. The moment you have set state then the render function is going to get called again and then the things will come. So whichever point you set set state on everything below that will get rendered. So here um, so all its style elements exist, right? So here, uh, for the new task thing, uh, the output has one, and then it has this, and then it has this. So it's going to render all of this. So you have to understand that these are also like React components. It's React to down that dev, React to down that input, React to down that stand. Basically, when we set uh, state, uh, this is going to render it, right? Yes. Uh, but this uh, input which already has a value doesn't get the render. Um, yeah, so the thing is here it doesn't change because it doesn't have to change. There is no effect on state on it. So when you render it, render it again, the diff will basically say you don't need to do this. Effectively, only this will change. So when this new task view is creating a class, yes. for rendering it, someone needs to instantiate the class and make an object. React will do that. Really. So React does that. No, but we must So which one? The instantiating the class. For which class? New task view. The new task view we are basically calling it. Let me here. So in the main task list. So we have put a new task view there. Yeah, so whenever the tag is done, it will create an object out of it and then the... Yes. Just like anything else that you see.
So I'm just going to move it a couple of hours because we were just doing it. It will work anyway because it's in the render thing and it will got evaluated. But since we are rendering, uh, referencing new task view from task view, it's better if it's loaded in. That's why if you're putting it down, the new task view is on the top. It will still work because uh, you're only calling new task view in the render function and by the time it comes to render, it knows what it is. The variable already exists. But ideally speaking, you should be... Who is invoking the get state? So it's a part of the life cycle method. So you would actually have task that class is instantiated. Yes. So the first time it is being yeah first time it's being injected into the norm, then get initial state will be called. That variable that you are setting an output. Yeah, that's just a yeah. I'm setting it here. In the, in the variable task view, mm -hmm. while rendering you are passing task view task equals to yeah, curly brace thing. Yeah. So when, when we do like this, it is it comes as a property variable. Yes. We can pass any. Yes. You can pass any object. Yeah. So like class, basically all these will come as. You can even pass in functions. functions. Will come. There. You will actually pass in functions too as properties. Mm. It will always be in the form of this dot props. Yes, it will always be within this dot props. And what if we reuse some original HTML tag as a variable? We will not be able to use it in this code. I didn't quite example. understand. Like, for example, example, if I use where I like. Mm -hmm. Goes to React or C or something. Yeah, I mean, we are basically shadowing it, right? At that point, after that, we will not be able to use the original. In, at least within the scope. I haven't tried it, but yeah, I think it could be at least for that scope you want to use. Or, yeah, that's a good point. Because Angular has this concept of scope. Mm -hmm. So, we are each view having its own scope. So, essentially, state is, I mean, if you see the props in state, is what it depends on. So, there is no magic in terms of like, okay, I can. I can reference any variable. Right? It has to always be from props or state, and everything else is derived from props. So there is no scope concept here. So we have props in state, and every view is having props in state. Yes, that is the only thing that can influence how the UI will decide from the object. So in that case, the parent view cannot, the child view cannot see what the parent view's props are. Yes, no, they cannot. Okay. So you don't have scope inheritance. Which is the biggest problem in Angular. It's not a feature itself. It's a source of many bugs. Okay. We good? Can we move on? So what we want to do is, um, so in the task list view, your tasks is here, right? So 
Um, so ideally what I want to do is I want to be able to find out the key up. So instead of an on change, I'm going to change this to on key up. Okay. And so if I do on key up, I actually get uh, e dot target e dot key code. Right. And for enter, since I've scarred with uh, JavaScript programming and other things, I know the value of enter is 13. So, yeah, it's just a magic number. So, uh, so if key code is not 13, uh, or if it is 13, then we do this. Otherwise, we simply return from there. Okay. So, that, so what this basically means at this point in time is that, so this won't happen. If I only if I hit enter, it comes here. Okay. So this does, does nothing. Only if I hit enter, that changes. So far, so good. Make sense? Okay. Is this what you want to do? No, just not the event. Okay. <coughs> um, I, I think this has to do with the time it paints this. Something, something. Yeah, it, it seems odd. I, I, I haven't figured out why this happens. But I've seen, yeah. I've seen. Yeah, so but if you do e.key code, that works. Yeah, that works. That works fine, yes. Yeah, one of those. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. They say it's like a. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why it is so. I haven't looked into it. Maybe I should. Any performance advantage over using on here instead of on change? So if you look at the number of native events you have to handle on on change, uh, it's actually higher than you just do, you know. So he was just doing a benchmark on that. So so you you would have to profile it. Yeah. So it takes about three, four hours for each key down and key up and key press. I think the selection change event also is high. So yes. Better to do one of these and not all of them. Yeah. So you have like six twelve MS of events happening. The browser can take MS. Twelve milliseconds. So it's better to do better to do you know let's say two back two MS one yeah. right so just and just on, on on key up alone would be two MS alone actually two or three MS yeah and one one probably be that much also yeah so all the change actually happens for every key to key down key up and selection yeah you see that see I mean. mean Uh, how do you get to that this thing here? Capture uh, last then that is frame. No. The graph thing and keep that selected. Yeah, it is selected. So it should be blue. Oh. Uh, it's not hard to start that. Start yeah, yeah, yeah. Click on it. Click on record. Change, 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 change
So here, um, so instead of saying set, this dot set state, what I want to really do is change tasks here, right? And 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 do this. I want to add one more item here, right? So, so I can't change tasks here because new task view doesn't know about tasks. Actually, so the only thing that knows about tasks is task list view. Actually, so but I put the handle change here. So I could always say. Um, Or I can say, suppose I have an event like this, so I should be able to call on new task and say new or I'll say, I think I call it these titles, right? I'll call these title, title, um, and I need the actual value right here. So what I will do is um, I can do e dot target dot value, or if I'm doing something more complicated, I can put a ref here. And say new pass, and I can then get uh, this dot refs dot new task input. So this will give me the React download. So to get the actual download, I can say get download. This will give me the actual download, and I can then say value. React download is like a separator on top of the normal. Yeah, pretty much. So I can do this, and I can get this. Out. So where does this on new task come? Right. So what is the obvious place to put it? You know, it will be here. Okay. So I'm going to have a function on my task list view, say handle new task, right, and say this would be like. And here I can say, oh, this is the place we are passing function instead of props. Exactly, exactly. And I can get the task and here. Sure. State. What if multiple views want to listen to it? Hmm? If no, any change in that. Yeah, so multiple things will come to that. Come. So you need a proper eventing system. This is like a poor poor man's eventing system. Actually, so I put it on props. So this will be available on uh, this dot props dot on new task, right? So here, if I come in and I can then uh, say this uh, dot state dot pass dot push uh, task, and I can say this dot. So what I can do now is then I should be able to. Right, so now it's not clearing the input, though. That's another thing that you want to do. So you can call this and then say this dot set state. So now. So what we did here was we passed in. Um, so when we created the new task view, we actually created a property called on task view. I passed it a handle new task, and then. This is this function is supposed to get a task and then it pushes the 
tasks, I mean, new tasks to the state or tasks, mm-hmm. and resets the state to the same same object essentially. And uh, then what here we do is that we have the handle change, and the handle change actually um, does the uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, checks for the enter event, and if it's enter, then it actually creates a new task object with title and the value of the download, and then calls props dot on new task, which basically delegates down to whoever is doing that. And and the reason why we are doing it is because um, the the guy who uh, has to change the state has to be the owner who has the state, right? I mean, this new task list doesn't have the have the I mean it doesn't own the task state object actually so its parent holds it so it expects a call back from the parent and then you can then set the the parent then sets the state on itself and everything changes there so the set state is it is uh passing the object object to the set state Yes. We are, we are already updating the state in the previous state, right? So, um, so and we are firing an event set state. Ah, uh, yeah. So sets. If you if you just do this, yeah. nothing will change because you're not. I mean, although you have mutated this object, so it doesn't know that it has to re-render. Is it really required that we need to pass that property again into the one? Can't we just call set state? Ah, uh, yes, you can. That's very observant of you. You can actually. So this would also work. The reason it works is that okay, state is all we have already mutated state. All we have to do is like indicate that it needs to redraw itself because the state has changed. But this is considered a kind of an anti-pattern because um, so okay, we we saw a get initial state in the render, right? So there are multiple uh, component lifecycle methods, right? So we saw we looked at render component, right? We say React dot render component, and you say a mount node actually, right? So before the component mounts. Can actually say uh, will mount component. I mean, component will mount will get called, and then uh, it will basically call. Uh, I mean, sorry, to call get initial state in component will mount. You can try to do AJAX calls and register things there actually, and then uh, you can all and in component will mount you can also change state, and then you will then get to render, and after render you get to component did mount and all this. So this is this whole life cycle of the functions of callbacks that you can deal with here. Um, so when you when you're doing these kind of things, uh, the get initial state and all those kind of things, there the the state object here we are changing something, right? So we should be. I mean, if it is easier for us to know what has changed if we set this thing again from even from a readability perspective. Nothing happens there actually, and it gets merged in. Okay, so if you if you if you hit enter here actually, right? So if you hit enter, then it goes to handle change. Handle change then expects a property called on new task. So the on new task is basically passed in from the task list view. So this is handle new task. So it creates a fun, uh, type task object with title set to the DOM nodes value. Okay. And then it basically calls on new task. On new task basically calls set state, okay, and then it comes here, and it re does the whole thing. So the beauty of this approach is that since uh, nothing changes, say for example, if we don't, we didn't change it. So we said uh, set state basically calls everything, right? I mean, so here, uh, if I don't clear the down node, uh, even though it has re-rendered the entire thing, so that means that it has re-rendered this. Dev new task view this UL and this dev, it doesn't change the uh, uh, input element here because there's no change on it required. Even though it has re-rendered, right? It is re-rendered. So new task view. The, the tasks, uh, uh, who's asking it to re-render? So we are calling this dot set state here, right? So when you call this dot set set state, it calls the render function. Right, it's going to generate the whole new DOM again. Oh, okay. Right, but since there is no change required on the input element, it basically doesn't get re-rendered. Yes. Yes. Even the whole UL won't be re-rendered. Yeah, not the whole UL. So you will have this. Only the last item will get added. 
No, the task list view, or the new task view is outside the task list view. Right? No, it is inside the. Uh, yeah, it's out. Uh, it is inside the task oh, list. View. Okay, okay. Okay. Yes. The difference is you don't have to care about it. React will take care of it. That, and that's a huge thing actually. If you are re entering this, the new task view will not go through all the lifecycle method. Uh, it will call the lifecycle methods. It will actually call render again on this. No, get initial state. No, get initial state will not be called. It will only re render. Okay, okay. So, like for example, let me show you this. Right? So I put a console log here. Sure. So, you see this? It's getting rendered again. So, even if one field or any, whenever you call it state, all the <coughs> elements in that view. On case. the, on, yeah, basically everything downstream will get re rendered. Well, re rendered virtually, right? Re rendered virtually, yes. So, set state called that Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I just find the syntax related to the top. I, I was calling this dot set state with this dot state so that we can you download a state. Yeah. Um, so, when we were passing in the empty object, I thought it would clear the whole state. No, okay, so it merges. So, that's a, that's that's the reason why. I, so it merges uh, whatever you pass with the old state. Now, how do I clear the replace state? state. This dot replace state will replace the whole thing. So is that merge necessary? Can I just go this dot set state, this dot state? Um, um, yeah, you can actually. I, I don't see a reason why. Or is the merge necessary for you? No, it's not. Yeah, but it's super fluid state. Okay, this is not just state, this is It's like an OAP. Yeah. When we are doing this dot set state equals to this dot state. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a sense, it, it, it basically uh, merges the everything that you do. So essentially, if you pass an empty array, so we have already mutated it. So what we wanted to do was uh, this, right? We want to set tasks to the new tasks that we have mutated. Actually, now the argument here is that hey, you are anyway mutating it in place. Actually, so since you are mutating it in place. Why not do this? So if, if, if it's like a Ajax call, then this person won't arise, right? Because you'll basically get a new object from there, and you need to do this actually, right? But since it's all happening in there, so since we're mutating the whole thing, so uh, we cannot pass anything. That will also work, or anyway, it's going to merge the uh, keys there, so you can actually pass it this dot state itself. That will also be good. But I prefer to have it this way. So it's, it's explicit on what we are changing. So I will explicit. And this is set state. You want? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll keep it here. This is set state. Let's say the Yeah, it basically triggers a re render of the itself and all the children. Children of the box. You say that if the first object, the next box we are not setting it as empty, it will only render the last last No, it is not that. So in a sense that um, even if it renders the uh, the same task view, actually, so it does a virtual render, right? And then it finds out that the input mode that we have doesn't need any change. This is exactly. So when it's finally writing the DOM operation, right? It will when fitting the DOM actual DOM, this change will not be propagated. So that's why you 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 will have to manually go and clear it actually. Otherwise, since that that DOM doesn't need any change 
or any change that happened happened outside. I mean, like even if you say dot value there, and under, so it wouldn't know because it is not happening on the virtual DOM. It's happening on the real DOM. Right. So any changes on the real DOM, React will not know. It will have a virtual DOM and it will have uh, the newly rendered virtual DOM. It will try to make it different and bigger. So that means jQuery will be covered. Right? Because anything that affects the real DOM, so you will have to redo it or reconcile it because whatever change is there on the real DOM, we are done with one so, uh, uh, jQuery also has its virtual DOM? No. jQuery actually works on the real DOM. So, when you, when you render a component out and then you are making some change in the actual scene. Then in such a case, uh, if, if you have already made a change and then uh, you are going through one more change here. So if, if some of the real DOM has changed, this will not work. So you will have to do a component did update and then uh, try to do a jQuery binding again. Either destroy the old one and create one. As far as possible, if you can avoid it. So is the case with Angular also? Angular uses its own virtual DOM? No, Angular does not use any virtual DOM. Okay. Angular, if you're using a director, you can always use the link function and do whatever you want. Any yeah. yeah. jQuery stuff that you want. So in a, in a sense, yeah, that is something that kind of like, uh, you know, I mean, ideally speaking, you shouldn't take that into account. Let it go through. Exactly, exactly. So most of the jQuery plugins actually is quite a bit of we write it into, 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 into React. Yeah. And it will be much less Because you don't have to all the state will be in the box of the same model. So you have to do this. And you can have a published uh, yeah. API to do that. Can I check that the password is on new task OS as you write them and then pass it to Oh, that's because that's how we create our uh, title objects, I mean, task objects before. Like Let me know if you are all able to add things or if any of you needs assistance, I'd be happy to. Uh, how did I create the text box? Uh, here, this line, line 24. Parent has passed on your task property to the child. Yes. So that's how the child interacts with the method of the parent. Exactly. So that is the only way to otherwise you will be really useful. Yeah. So this is like a defined contract, and you know that you need to get this on cross. In fact, you could you could say uh, I forget the exact syntax for it. You can say.
So you can actually see um, you can declare the prop text. I'm missing the so you can actually say I need this and probably get back to you on this one. Um, so you can actually say um, you want to have these particular properties and you can say this is required actually. Uh, React or prop types. So you can say prop uh, You can say um, Prop types, and then you can say react dot prop type dot uh, And so, if you don't, Now whole bunch of things. So you can do this. So if you if you don't pass um, the on new task here actually. So it will actually give a so ideally speaking it should have thrown an error, maybe I got the prop type sound. Actually, it's supposed to give an error saying that the um, on you ta you haven't passed on you task. Actually, is it? Uh, um, I'm sorry. What is the prop type? So prop types is these are the property types that new task view requires, and then you can say this guy on new task actually requires. All these things actually, and I can say that on your task, prop. It's a validation. Oh, invariant violation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it has actually. It must is invalid. It must be a function. So if you. Yeah, it, it's just a warning. So it, yeah, I thought it would give an error. Yeah, it, it's just a warning. So now the warning goes away. So it also gives one more thing saying that each child in an array should have a unique key property. Actually, so here it, it comes because of this. Uh, we are actually doing a loop on this, and we are not, I mean, none of these have the key value here. So you can say, um, you can do this to get rid of this. So essentially, what this does is that you need to have these unique values and these unique. Uh, so remember, we saw that uh, when I said how it does this DOM operation. When the second one got introduced, it actually said change the text to second and then this. That's not ideal, right? We just need to add one node and not not do this. And so if you put a key, then it will not touch the component with the same key. And these uh, and these keys need to be uh, unique uh, among siblings. It's not that it needs to be unique among. It's not like ID. 
right? So ID DOM ID needs to be unique across the entire page. Key just needs to be unique across its siblings. So it's a better way to. Yes. Okay. Does anybody need any assistance or <coughs> so how is it going? Is it like going too fast, too slow? It's good. Yeah, anything with the, so it's not that it won't change, it's just that so if, if the key is the same, then it'll try to match the same DOM node with the same key. And then if they haven't changed, then it, it moves on to the next one. So it doesn't like do DOM operations for stuff. So it tries to be a little bit intelligent when it's sleeping. Similar to trackline I'm sorry? Similar to trackline I'm not aware of that. I haven't done so much anger. I'm not aware of trackline. In the uh, JPEG, we use uh, some, um, say, uh, variable Okay. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't aware of that. There is something we Yes, it adds the data having properties. Does it make user tools to actually change the time? Find different changes. Uh, no, it just, it just uses it for its own, like, uh, it, it would be a path, like, start 0.0.0.1 or something like that. It's the path in which it goes out from the main virtual console, what is the other path. It's using it for its own specific and for the event. No, if I don't think it is important that it process and not be wrong, I need to do it. But actually, my understanding is uh, I have to check that. I don't know. I I and then it has been there. So, I mean, I'm not sure. So, for example, if the ID from the database, I'm sure I'm not sure. I was just being lazy and I said, map this and the index, I just said the index. So, you can and if you, if you repeat the same thing twice, it's actually going to have that thing that's called. I'm sorry? Yeah. Let me close this. Oh, the key part? I, I think I put it here. Okay. Oh, you mean the key, yeah, key code? Now, uh, what is that? Code? Oh, the props type, prop types. Type. Okay, prop types is basically to say that I require a on new task. Think here. If it's not there, it generates a warning, actually. So, I was thinking that it should generate an error, but it's being soft on This key says like uh, something should have. No, no, it is just that it tries to be a little smart about DOM right? So remember, so let me go back to this here. So here we saw that right when you do a render A and render B. So the the change that it does is that okay, it comes here and says, hey, I need to change the first guy to second. And I need to add one more uh, thing called first. Ideally speaking, what should should have done is come here, just insert one node here, and that's about it. Like, uh, it says that I need. Okay, so it's going to give an unique ID to all the key. It, this is a key within a particular sibling range. Okay. 
how is that key? So, okay, for example, say this has span 0, and this is also span 0, and this is span 1, right? So it knows that, hey, I have a span 0 already here, so I don't have to touch it. So I just need to in include, in do only one insert node on span 1, span with key 1. So instead of two DOM operations, it will just be one DOM operation. So in our example, how is this useful? So I mean, I just killed a warning. I just killed a warning. So it still works. Right? It just does lesser DOM operations. So in our case, it anyway didn't matter because we are adding it to the end. Can we say task start push? So if we do a task dot uh, unshift, then if it puts it on first, then it will have to change the first thing to this. And, and so, no, it's looking at other side. Oh, you're looking at other side. You are appending one extra node to the existing tree. Yes. Uh, so that's only one way you can do it, right? Why is it No, no, in a sense, if you think about, okay, think you are writing this diff algorithm, right? So you have one, within that you have one span and then you have the inner text, right? And then you have another tree which has one div, two spans and each one of them having inner text. So you walk through this and you find the first span having the text changed. So you create one dark operation, like, oh, first guy changes text. And then you come and say, oh, within the next div, add a span with this. So you generate these two operations when you do this three different. So, you, but if you have a key, then you find the key and say, "Hey, this key is different from this key, so don't touch this guy." Okay, maybe mark it for a deletion if it's not there. So you keep marking them right, and then you say, "Maybe one shot and just remove all those notes if the key is not." There. So this is not the uh, react way of dominant. This is the react way of dominant. So in here, it is actually changing the text. Yes. So if you put a key, then it wouldn't. Okay. But react is only putting keys there. No, react. Oh no, react puts a data, react data ID or something like that. Uh, I don't know for sure what it's used for, but my intuition is that it. Huh? So I was trying to add that key. Mm -hmm. That react uh, data from react ID was the one. My key. Oh, okay. Key. Oh, okay. The, my, okay. the, the final uh, thing on this takes you. The final version is the hierarchy of the. Yeah, it, it looks like it's the path so where it relies in the DOM. Yeah, yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah, I, I, I haven't gone that. that is that key refers to only the tag or even the text node as well? It will refer only. Uh, it depends on where it is, right? For us, we put it directly on the. Uh, uh, we put it directly on the new task thing, right? So it is going to be there. So let, let me let me get this out here, right? So so I have this React plugin. So this is this is an awesome plugin. You should, you should look at it. And so here, so it will be at so it will be at the task view level, right? And the task view level, it will set the key here. So as I change this, it will keep adding these things. So if I don't have the key, let me get rid of this. Um, so let me, let me not put the key here. Can you go unshift here and see what happens? Yeah, yeah. Let's do a, we'll remove the key, do an unshift and check what happens. Works. So here there is no key actually. So my the thing is that so let, let's look at the data hyphen ID. So this is React one. Let's look at the li actually. One zero zero one zero one and all that. So the data hyphen ID doesn't change. Right? Then let's try doing the key one and let's see if that changes. 
I'm not sure if that will work, but it's interesting. Again, it will be zero one two three. So it will be the order of the array. Or we have written the string or something. Is it the order of the array? Uh, it will be the order of the array. Yes, but it puts the dollar, dollar, dollar in front of it. Dollar. So maybe we'll try to let me. Um, So I have like a broken GUID function, let me try using that. Don't use this in your production code. Because the length of the GUID keeps changing, I have to use this. So what I'm going to do is, again, uh, I'll put it. And in the new task view also I'll say ID calling to it. So, yeah. And in the key I'll say P dot ID. So let's see what happens. So So the li elements have this id. So as I push this, so if you have the key, probably this won't happen. It will just be the id and then we keep changing. What is the data react id? Is it the auto-generated So it looks like the path of this node in the virtual DOM, actually. And if, if, if it doesn't have a uh, key, then it just gives a numerical value. If not, whatever you put as a key, basically it's a dollar and that key here. I think it uses for DOM manipulation also. Yes. Ultimately, yes. it needs some sort of identifier. Yes. But that's good to know. Thanks. <laughs> By the way, that was some stack overflow that GUID function. Okay. Are we good? Anybody needs any assistance? Are we, can we move along? Next one. So we'll do a double click to toggle state. And that's the next cool thing. So, then, <coughs> so we'll get the output back here. So what we want to do next is, um, when I double click it, I want to like toggle whether it's completed or not. So that obviously the double click happens in the in here in, on a light actually. So it'll be like on double click. This is what is supposed to happen. So, so the, the thing is now, uh, so this is a task view, and so you can't change the tasks uh, thing here. And uh, so you only need to change the uh, change the value of the task actually. So. Usually what you could do is, you could say get initial state and here in this case since the state of this is purely uh, on the basis of whether the task is completed or not, I can say return um, task colon this dot prompts dot task okay. and here I can prefer the state actually. And so 
and say this dot state dot task dot completed. So I'll have to get the start. Not 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 click. Get that. And then I'll say this dot set state. null then you put a not or you some value and then you put a not not uh, it turns it into a boolean of a true the or a false value and then you turn one more not to turn it into either true or false it's like a so, then it's the boolean not. so you, you can just put one not and it depends on it if it's a true the value then it turns into false if it's a false value then it turns into true but, but, but in javascript true the and false I mean, like null is false value then it turns into true but it's uh, kind of a, I mean, it's, it's inelegant to me. I mean, like, I want to deterministically know that it's, it's not. So, here's a label. Double not. Yeah, we'll talk about flex. We will only talk about it. We won't. We, I don't think we'll have time to set up dispatcher, action stores, or controller to do all this. skills are amazing, So let me know if you need any assistance. So if you notice this, I mean like this is kind of an anti-pattern actually. The anti-pattern is that we, uh, so what we have in props is supposed to be immutable actually. Um, but we get that turn it into state and then mutate it. Yeah. Um, we could as well have said uh, this and then you could have said you could as well change the props directly and say set state of nothing and this would still work. But uh, but ideally speaking this task queue is only dependent on that. So we can take it as a state and then work with it actually. Rather than props. So the, the community is kind of divided on 
on this kind of a pattern. So it's kind of like saying, okay, what is the prop and what is the staple? And you really, so you're only doing this because that's the only way of getting data in there. Or that's the only way of getting state in there. And then you're using it as such. I mean, like if you do a transformation and use it, it's a different story. But here, in this case, you're clearly using it as such. But these are some of the problems where you use React just like that. Once you use Flux, these problems will work. Can you move Okay. okay, cool. So moving on. Okay, so one more thing that I wanted to do was I want to display a summary of how many tasks are completed, how many tasks are pending and all that. And I wanted to do it above the input thing. Okay. So I'll have a summary view. And this would have a render function. It would be like um, Mm -hmm. So this is in the task list view. So above the 
new task in. It also has some read. And to this, I'll pass the tasks. This state pass because it needs to do the computation and stuff. And so something is wrong. I think I forgot to do the term there. Um, some review. So it's just completed zero to zero. So basically what I want to do is I want to be able to say completed count this term task filter key So we get the summary. As I said, I have I have my CSS design skills. So the, the problem now is that this okay, I'll let it get here and then Oh yeah, here in the uh, task list view. Um, so I said summary view tasks is and then it was. Hmm? Yes, it is not. Why? Yeah, the, the set state is happening on, on one of those components below. It's not happening on top. So it doesn't know, actually. So even though the component has changed, even though the task has changed, it doesn't trigger render on, on, on the top.
Is everybody here so far? Not because of the act, but Jay. Just to be clear. Next question. Sure. So, uh, this by defining these summary views and the task view inside task list view. Yeah. So, it became the parent of these things. Yes. And what if one of them had this inside them? Right? So, uh, we have a term with summary view, then my task view. Uh -huh. right? Yes. So, that means that these are children of uh, task list. Yes. Right? So, what if I try to do something like, you know, inside summary view, inside library, 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 inside no, I mean, even at a JavaScript level, it will actually cause a this thing, right? It will cause a start overflow, right? I'll not write on the JSP, but I'll write on the JSP. Yeah, so you can do it. JSP seems to be very particular about start overflow, and then the whole browser tab crashes. If you have a start overflow on the JSP, that's fun. What if we pass multiple classes? So, what is the process? Where is it? Okay, okay. When you have a class, you have a class. FA and FA has to be whatever. Is that okay? It's not happening on the previous one. The previous one I have added this. Now, the problem is if we double click on task 2 and you change the completed count, right? You can see the summary does not change actually, right? So that's a problem for us. The reason it is not happening is because when we double click on it, we set the state for the task view, right? And that is like a child of, uh, you know, the uh, task list view, which is which then has summary view within it. So summary view doesn't get updated. 
So the the obvious thing would be to actually have a callback on uh, on this thing and keep passing it around, right? And so when this task thing when task state changes, do this so that we can do a set state on it again and so on and so forth. That is one way of doing it, right? So the other way of doing it, uh, so that's what we did with the handle uh, so handle in, on key down. So that's what we did. So the other way of doing it, or rather the preferred way of doing it, would be to so you have this task subject here. So we can say um, this is a very crude thing. Okay, so what I will do is I am just going to do a little bit of thing here. Uh, And I'm going to say this dot pass sequence. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to say add and then or I keep it at this at this point in time. So I'll say pass sequence. Here we get the initial stage of this tasks. This task will be task, this way. Summary view. Again, to say. So essentially, you've got something here. So let's fix the portal as well. So it's like a poor man's kind of thing, but I've got an got an object now, actually, right? So since I've got an object, I can actually say I basically add keys to parents. So even in the handle new task, so I'm going to do a couple of things here. So I'm going to also do start total time and function which takes in which takes in across. Um, I'm going to add a dash. Underscore. I'll add underscore. Okay, just to so I'm gonna say and. Uh, So I'm just making this uh, an add function here, which basically uh, takes in a bunch of properties uh, and then it clones them, uh, it merges them with a new ID and class of this and then pushes it. So instead of task dot task dot push, return dot add. And defined is not a function. This dot add underscore dot clone is probably causing a problem. Um, underscore. Let's see. Let's see. Let's 
so this is the problem. Uh, sample score is not That's where it is. So we have to say sample score. So it is underscore dot merge. So here we are doing underscore dot merge of um, this okay. this so now what we have done is we have gotten we are directly injecting GUID and this thing. So we don't need to pass this here, we don't need to pass this here. So GUID and stuff is already there now. So we may, we have simplified the API a little bit. So first of all. Now, then, uh, so similarly, what we will do is when you have this, we will create a task object. Okay. And have this contain props, actually. And any We'll do this so that we basically get all the props here. And instead of task dot push task, we will say task dot push new task of props. Fair enough. So this should start working. And this code is not defined. Okay, so we've got this working now. Okay, now I'm also going to say task dot prototype dot toggle. Okay, and say this dot dead. Oh, not 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 this dot. Okay, similar kind of thing. So here, when I double click it. Still continue to work for us. Right. So far, so good. We haven't broken anything. Right. Now, but we have we have a toggle here. Actually, so now since we have a toggle, okay, so we can basically say. So I'm going to add a couple of more items on to task list. Actually, okay. Now I'm going to say task list dot prototype dot on is actually a function. That takes um, and call it on change. That basically takes a callback and task list. I will actually, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to do this. Push call. Okay. Just bear with me for a moment here. I will go through the changes as we go. Okay. So I pushed a call back into this, and so I'm trying to build an eventing system of sorts. Right. So I also will have a task list dot prototype dot image change. Okay. And all this does is just start callback start for each simply calls 
products. Okay, that's all it does. Very, very, very simple. Okay. So, and when this task prototype gets toggled, I will say this dot process dot image with me so far. Okay. So basically what I have done is I have gotten a way out of React to signal uh, models to basically say hey I have changed sort of thing. Right? Whenever they go through a change. Right? Similarly when I go through a prototype dot add I will do the same thing. Now, in my summary view, so there is this life cycle event called component will mount. Actually, in component will mount, I will say this dot prompts dot, or in fact, let me not do this here. So I'll go all the way to the task list because this is where the initial task is being set. So I will go component with mount function start task start on change. This dot handle change. Okay. This dot handle change, all it does is this basically says this dot set state. And what we'll also do is in this callback. We will pass it this actually. So this is a function with two appointment. So so what we are basically going to call each one of these right? uh, and so what would happen now is I get the new tasks object here. So this handle change will have a new tasks object. And I can say, okay. So, what is the task will mount for? Huh? Ta component will mount is basically a. Just give me one second. I'm going to type around if I understand. No, it will be the whole function. So, the task will be and then dot task will be the task. So, in your handle change function. Hold on, just give me one more. So saying um, passing the entire task list instead of just tasks. Uh, yes, I'm passing the entire task list. And in the handle change, you're just going to list the state of tasks. Um, okay, in the handle change, I just said task to task, right? But that is task list. That's yeah, yeah, even here it's task list only. Right? It's task list only. There's something no, else. No, the task list is now a function with task as a property. No, it's a, it's a class actually. It's yeah, a class. It's, it has task in its property, right? Yes. Uh, so it's okay. It, it's saying that um, push is repeated a couple of times. Okay, just give me one thing. So I have a task list of ads. So I have a task dot add. So basically going to task list prototype dot because I have already said var task is equal to new task list. Yep. Okay, so I created an object. So task list prototype dot add basically gets this new task thing. Yep, ah, task and, 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 okay. Um this dot task would be there already. Mm. Oh, this dot image change. Yes. 
So now, so it's, okay. In fact, it works so well that we can remove all these other stuff. Right? We can we can actually not do this handling new task here. Okay, because add also does a limit change. So, for example, so prototype add also does an image change. So I can get rid of this. Um, here, so if I here, and it does a past dot unshift, right? Instead, what we can do is, uh, so we can let this be here. We need not set state here. We can simply do a, this dot this task dot and task. So this would make sure that this gets added, the total gets updated. And similarly in the task view, we are doing a set state here, that is also not required. Because since the change propagates, the summary view changes, the whole thing changes. So this simplifies a lot of this local state changes and side loads this change from there. So this is a this is a lot to digest. So let me walk through the change one more time. Okay. Earlier we just had a tasks array, and we just had just pure JavaScript objects onto it. So what we did was we created two models out of it. So the task list model and the task model, and for each one of them we added a few um, methods onto them. Right. So let me. Then move them so that they are local. So for the task list thing, we, we initialized it with an empty uh, array for tasks and an empty array for callbacks. And then uh, on an add thing, what we did is, uh, so we also had a on change and image change. So on on change basically it takes all these call callbacks and then it registers a callback with with you actually. Uh, so you can do you should do a lot more things like for example you need to check if the callback has already been registered. Have a way to unregister a callback, and also, but this is like very bare bones kind of thing. And then, what we then do is, whenever you add, then you uh, actually just get a list of properties. You clone the properties that you get because you don't want to, uh, you know, have Kool Aid propagated upwards. Actually, so you want to make sure that the Kool Aid always propagates downwards. So you clone that, and then you do an underscore extend with a few default things. So what I'm doing is I'm passing a reference and basically setting the task parent to myself, actually, which is tasks, and then I'm also setting the ID for it. So, and then I uh, underscore or extend basically copies over these properties and then creates a new property value. And then I also have a new task object, and what this new task object does is basically copy whatever set of properties it gets, it basically copies over to itself. So that is all. That's all it does. And then, whenever an add changes, I emit the change. And when I emit the change, what happens is that it actually goes through a list of callbacks, and then it calls that thing here. And since we are using this here, you'll have to bind it. Otherwise, it will be a global window object. So you'll have to. So and when this emits, it basically calls the call. So there is nothing here. And similarly for task, also there is this toggle method. Which sets it, uh, which uh, toggles its completed property, and it calls an emit change on its parent. Okay, I'm just being sloppy here. Ideally speaking, I should only emit a change for myself, and uh, your parent will listen to changes of the children, and then it has to do its own things. But we don't have time for that now. But ideally speaking, that would be the way in which you want to go. Okay. So because of this, now uh, what we have is in the task list view. So we have our initial state that is tasks, actually, and then we have a component will mount, actually, and then the component will mount. We have a, a on change kind of thing, and then we have a handle uh, handle change, actually. So the handle change will basically do a set state, and that's what it. Okay, and then the rest of it continues. Now the other thing that we did in the task view was that. We called the, this dot state dot. In fact, this is a very nice thing. So we get it as props, right? So we are not changing anything in state here. So you can do props. So, right? 
So this should also work for us. Can't you properly task of many? Oh, I have a state somewhere. Oh, here, yes. So now, since we are doing it on the prop, this should still work. So that's a that's a nice thing. So we've gotten rid of state dependency even here, and so it will flow through the program. And again, summary view, you get the same thing, and summary view will also get re-rendered. So there is no necessity to watch or re-render any state. It still renders on props. Uh, I I, re I re realized that I went a little bit fast here. Where are there so many tasks? This is dot props dot task dot task. Uh, so here I'm doing a filter. In fact, I can take it there. So this is a task. This is a task list object, and okay. within that it has this array, right? So okay. ideally speaking, uh, like if you use something like backbone, you can just say dot filter directly on. So that's the only thing. Okay, so here, whenever task changes, summary view is a child of this type. Right? So you're calling a, uh, so whenever you do an emit change, this dot set state changes, right? And so it's going to re render the whole thing. When this component will mount against the so component will mount will just get invoked just before render. So this is the perfect place if you want to like make an Ajax call and then on on the this thing of the Ajax call you want to. And it'll, it'll be called every time. It's, Whoops. Every time it's going to be rendered or only once. I'm sorry. It'll be called every time it's going to be rendered or. Uh, component only once. Only once. Because you just need to set up a callback only once. Yep. I'm sure you have a lot of questions here. Can we see all these examples like online and somewhere like where we can go through it once again? Like once so, um, yeah, we can, uh, I will, this is available on JSBIN. So, the same so, link or you will put it in yeah. the GitHub? Yeah, I will put it in the GitHub. I will put it on the funnel actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, you can take it from there. Somewhere we can wrap around it. Yes, yes. I'll put it on the front. I'll put the slides and also this on the front. Yes. Oh, no, I will come to that. I mean, in this, if you have any more questions, we can, we can, we can deal with that now. Right, right. The components will not change. Yeah. What exactly is the life cycle of So, um, okay. I should have put a slide for it, but... Since it's not there, I'll just talk in here about um, it. Okay, so you have component will mount and then render will be called and then it does component did mount actually and before that it will actually get, uh, so it will be like component, uh, component will receive props and then component will mount and then uh, it will be, uh, then should component update and then it will be render and then component did mount and then uh, it will be um, um, and then it will be uh, component will unmount when it is supposed to be and then you will have co component will update and component did update yeah. if well, it's for the re-render second so component will update render component did update before it will calls get initial state. Uh, it calls get initial state. Uh, no, it will say component will receive props and get initial state. Yeah, I, I mean, the component will receive props. I think will be. Oh no, no, it's just get initial state. This says it's not called for initial record. It's just there. 
sorry, I, I'm... Oh. That the random number generating part of the command shift key. Command shift key? Okay. That the random number generating part. Yeah. That's an optional extra thing. Yeah, 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 I just put it over there because we just need to delete them. Don't use it. It's buggy. So, this whole destruct state and destruct props is just a convention, right? Yes, for now, yes. In, in a sense, that props are supposed to be immutable, they're supposed to be small kind of values that you get passed on. But state is where you need to change stuff. Okay. Okay, so. If this is not there, so since we are running really short on time, I just want to get back here very quickly. Um, right. So problems, right? We, we noticed it somewhere here. So if you have card details and card summary and somewhere there, you tend to bubble up scale in the React, actually, right? And that's a problem, right? Because when you have, when, when you're bubbling up state, ultimately your parent, this guy, will be responsible for everything. Actually, so you will you'll keep doing that. So that's where, uh, so to answer Sultan's question, Flux comes in, actually. <laughs> right? So, so what Flux does is that, okay, so you have these views, okay, and then views, uh, so any type of actions that we do basically goes to a dispatcher, actually. And the dispatcher basically will call back the store. So this, I mean, it's assumed that the store registers for a callback, actually. And then the store would do whatever it has to do to do stuff. Maybe even make an Ajax call, get something, all those kind of things. And the store will then emit change events, okay, to your controller views. Okay, what are controller views? Maybe these are components which have this top level kind of components, or if they hold uh, logical components which hold other style components, and so on and so forth, they get triggered and they will then go and do a set state on it. So. The thing is that the data always flows in a unidirectional manner. So that's that's essentially the idea. Of, we tried doing that a little bit, in a sense that we just got it to the store, and then we just did store to view action. Right? We skipped the dispatcher and the other thing. So essentially, what the to do list and the to do thing was for a store was it was a store for us, actually. And from that emit event, we actually passed it a new object of tasks. I mean, even though referentially they will be equal if we compare. But essentially, that is the new object on which we are calling a set state. Right. And then this whole cycle happens. So this is just like coding in backbone, actually, if you, if you notice. But except that uh, it's like the liberty of doing a render every time. You do just do a no uh, uh, this dot el dot html is underscore dot template or whatever. And then call that. Flux is just a design pattern. There is no there is a there is a sort of a like uh, GitHub repo uh, where some the sample code for each one of this is there. But essentially it's kind of a design pattern that you say, okay, you do unidirectional data flows and you sideload data into component. So it's not that you pass it from parent to child and child to this thing and all of that. So each component what it requires is does a get initial state and gets whatever state it needs directly from the store. So it is not that, okay, so if I have these controller views which are logical views which hold that, so that is what is responsible for the data part of it, it can actually get it from the store. Store.fetch uh, person comma id is this. Right? Or if you use ember data or something like that, you could use just say person dot find id is this. And if it's there in local storage, it will try to figure out whether it has to do a XHR and get it into an XHR, or if it has responded over some other uh, like a WebSocket stream, it can do that. All that is left to the store. That's what the store is supposed to do. And we tried doing something like that for our tasks and this thing. So where we have abstracted that piece out, actually, and where it gets the data from, the view doesn't have to bother. It so happens that these are JavaScript objects. So if yeah, so the controller view, when I say control, I mean, I don't like the term controller view. I mean, it, I mean, think of it as like an ng-controller, angular controller, right? Angular controller is responsible for scope, 
in a sense, right? So it, I think they call it controller views because of that. For me, it is the logical component which is responsible for data, and then it may have all these like input divs and all those kind of things. So it will pass on whatever that it needs as props to it, and then they make the changes. So each one of this, when it does that, it will actually publish a change action. Those views will publish a action there, and that will go to dispatcher. The dispatcher will say, "Okay, which store is going to get it," and the store will then do it. So this is like, uh, uh, yeah, this is just boxes and arrows, but you get the idea. Idea is to get to a unidirectional data flow. And with unidirectional data flow, you can sideload the data and not have to pass it from parent to child strictly. So that will free you from having to. So you can say props is. Uh, so when you pass in props, you don't have to pro send the entire object, but you can send the ID of the object. And then in get initial state, you can fetch it from the store. So the props always remains immutable. Only the state changes. Fair enough? Does it answer your question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>